4.10 write quadratic functions and models. The aquatic formula, hilarious, I know. So the comic says if we have an equation for the trajectory, we can calculate the splashdown using the formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Of course, this is a quadratic formula, and the fish's trajectory would be parabolic. So we could calculate the splashdown using the quadratic formula since when he splashed down, it would be another one of our zeros. So in this lesson, instead of going from an equation to a graph, we're going to go from the graph back to the equation. So we really want to look at the information that's given to us and choose what form we want to put the equation in based on that. So in this question here, even if the directions did not tell you write it in vertex form, you would see that they give you the vertex as one of your points. So when they give you information about the vertex, you probably want to use vertex form to write it in. Remember, our vertex form was y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Again, you never need to memorize this exactly with all the letters. You just have to be able to use it. And so in this case, since we know the vertex is at 1, negative 2, we're going to use that information first to fill out what we can. So we don't know what our a is yet, but we do know x minus 1 squared minus 2 would be an equation with a vertex of 1, negative 2. So we start with what we know, and then we use our other point to find the a. So our other point is 3, 2. Use this to find our a. So what do I mean? We know that 3, 2 is a point. In other words, y is 2. We don't know a. We know x is 3 minus 1 squared minus 2. So now let's just solve it. 2 equals a times 2 squared minus 2. 2 equals 4a minus 2. Add 2 to both sides. 4a equals 4. In other words, a equals 1. And so our final answer would be y equals, our a is just 1, so we don't need to write it, but I'll just write it in two steps here y equals x minus 1 squared minus 2. Just one more time to go over. We started with the information we knew, which was the vertex. And so we put that in. We knew that an equation of the form y equals something times x minus 1 squared minus 2 would have a vertex of 1, negative 2. So we're going backwards now from what we were doing before. And then I used this other point, which was 3, 2, to find the value of a. To do that, for x, I plug in a 3, and for y, I plug in the 2, and then I get my value of a from that, and then I go back and write my equation in y equals form. We're going to do the same thing here, but it's obvious in here, even if they didn't tell me intercept form, it's obvious that I have the intercepts here or my zeros. And so intercept form was y equals a times, they said in the book, x minus p times x minus q, where p and q were your zeros. Again, you do not need to memorize this. Think to yourself, how do I get the zeros? I get them from factoring it all the way down and setting each of the factors equal to zero. You could automatically think to yourself, well, negative one is a zero, so how do I get the factor? A zero is x equals negative one. So how would I make it a zero? I would have to scoot the one over here so I would get x plus one as my factor. So this is the zero and this is my factor. And then let's do the same thing for the other one. We have 4 is a 0. And so what is our factor? 
Okay, when we set it, how do we make it equal to zero? X minus four would be our factor. And so I have right there, by using my zeros, I do my first step, which would be y equals, we don't know what the a is, but we know x plus one is a factor, and we know x minus four is another factor. Okay, and now I'm gonna use my other point to find the a. That's 3, 2. So we're going to find our a. So y is 2 equals a, we don't know, but our x is 3. So 3 plus 1, 3 minus 4. And so we get 2 equals a times 4 times negative 1 2 equals, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4a, in other words, a equals negative 1 half, and then we just put that back into our equation that we had here. So our final equation is y equals negative 1 half x plus 1 times x minus 4. Again, in this step, when I put in my other point, I just looked at my x, wherever I saw an x here, I put in the 3. Wherever I saw the y here, I put in a 2, and I only saw it the once. Okay, that was the same thing that I did back here, if you were confused on it. Wherever I saw an x, I put in a 3. Wherever I saw a y, which is only here, I put in a 2, because the y was a 2. Okay, so the point, I put it into this one. Finally, write a quadratic function in standard form, I should say form, for the parabola that passes through these three points. And so this is really the hardest type, or just the longest process, and you'll see why we were solving systems in three equations in this example. So in this one, I just really need to know that standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And I'm going to use each of my equations here. So the first point I'm going to use is negative 230. And I'm going to just put it in. So the y is 30 equals a, x is negative 2. So we have ax squared plus bx plus c. And then use the next point, which was 1, 6. Again, y is 6 equals a x squared plus b x plus c. Now use our last point, which was 4, 36. So we have y equals a x squared plus b x plus c. Okay, and now I'm just going to simplify each of these. So I get 30 equals negative 2, the quantity squared is 4a minus 2b plus c. This next one, I have 6 equals a, because 1 squared is just 1, plus b plus c. And the third one, I get 36 equals 16a plus 4 four B plus C. And now I have my system in three equations. I'm going to call this equation one, this equation two, and this equation three. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use equation one plus negative equation two. And so what happens there? I'm going to rewrite equation one. and I'm gonna do negative equation two. So negative six equals negative a minus b minus c, because now my c's are gonna cross out. And so I get 24 equals three a minus three b. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and use equation one and negative equation three. And so I have, again, 30 equals 
4a minus 2b plus c, and I get negative 36 equals negative 16a minus 4b minus c. Again, remember you need the same letter to cross out in these and in these. So again, I'm crossing out the c, and I get negative 6 equals negative 12a minus 6b. And now let's call this equation A and call this equation B. I'm going to put A and B together somehow so that something crosses out. Let's see what I can do. If I multiplied this whole thing by 4, then I would have 12a minus 12a. So I'm going to do 4 times equation A plus equation B. So I have 24 times 4 is 96 equals 12a minus 12b. And then I'll leave this one as is, minus 6 equals negative 12a minus 6b. Add them up, so I get 90 equals, and now my a crosses out, and I get negative 18b. So then divide both sides by negative 18 and I get b equals negative 5. Yay, that worked out nicely. So now I'm going to go ahead and just use equation A to find what A is. Um, and this is the equation. I want to use either this equation or this equation because that's in two variables. So use equation A to find my little a. And so I know that b is negative 5, so I have 24 equals 3a minus 3 times b, which is negative 5. And so I have 24 equals 3a plus 15. Subtract 15 from both sides, 9 equals 3a, or a equals 3. And finally, I can use any one of these equations to find what C is, and equation 2 looks easiest. So I'm going to use equation 2 to find C. And so I know A plus B plus C equals 6. A is 3 minus 5 plus C equals 6. So let's see, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So I'm going to add 2. 6 plus 2 is 8 c equals 8. Okay, and so I need to write my final answer, and my final answer is the equation y equals a x squared plus bx, but b is negative 5, plus c. And that is my final answer. Finally, we get to do some calculator work. Your club decides to sell t-shirts at a fundraiser. The table shows data from the last four years for the price charged for a t-shirt, X, and the total revenue earned from selling them, Y. Use a graphing calculator to find the best fitting quadratic model for the data. So just like we did LinReg, we also have something to do quadreg on our calculator. So it's going to be the same type of process. So go get your calculator. So the first thing we want to do is put all this data into a stat plot. So we click on the stat key, and we want to edit our list. Now if you have stuff in your stat plot like I do, in order to get rid of it, you go up to the L1 and hit clear. Do not hit delete. Hit clear and press enter. And you'll see that everything goes away. So again, go over to L2, go up to highlight the L2 button and hit clear and then press enter. And so you'll delete everything from there. Now you can just enter in the data. Once you have all of that entered in, if you want to take a look at what it looks like on a graph, you go to y equals and you need to turn your plot on. So in order to turn the plot on, you go up and you press enter. And you'll see that when I do that, it highlights it. And then to graph it, because when I graph it, probably won't see anything since my Y values are all the way up very, very high. So you can go to zoom and zoom nine will give you zoom stat. 
So that would plot our data for us, okay? And now I can go back to stat and I want to actually calculate, so go over to calc, and before I remember we were doing linreg, now we just wanna do quad reg. Press enter, okay, you can just press enter here and it will give you your quadratic equation. So it gives you y equals negative 24.6875x squared plus 609.875x minus 2134.25, and that is our answer. But you'll notice if you hit graph, it doesn't graph anything and nothing has gone in y equals. So again, if you wanna be fancy and do that, Go back to stat and do the quad reg, so that was number five, and then just go to the vars, go over to y vars, press function, and put it into y1. So if we do that, you'll see now that when I go to y1, it automatically put it in there for me, and when I go to graph it, wow, that's a pretty nice fit, isn't it? Again, this question did not ask you to graph it or any of that, but if you want to be all fancy and cool, which I know some of you do, that's how you do it. Again, what I did was I went to stat, I calculated the quad reg, which was option five, and then I wanted to put it in my y variable. So I went to vars, and I wanted to go over to y vars. It's a y variable, and I'm graphing functions. That's all we're gonna do in this class this year. So we're gonna do functions, y1. Boom, it's in my y equals, all right? So back over here, this was what my calculator spit out. So my answer is y equals a, which is negative 24.688x squared plus b, which is 609.875x plus c, which is negative 2134.25. And that is my answer. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.